Friends, buddies, pals, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. So, we've got a two day solo trip planned. Overnight, obviously. I've fished this river a couple times on this trip, but different beats of it. I've wanted to get up into the very, very top of this for ages, um, but just haven't had, I guess, the opportunity. We've got a weather window and Getting closer to the end of my trip now, but um, this is one I've really wanted to do. Got an early start, got the big pack on. So I'm gonna fish my way up to a certain point, then I have to jump out, go up and over, around through the bush. Then apparently I can get out the other side and it opens up again. So that's what we're gonna go and try and do today. This river is not a numbers game. You don't come here expecting to catch a lot of fish. If you catch one fish in here, you've nailed it so we'll see we'll have a go we'll have a crack we'll see what we can do looking forward to camping out having a look around seeing somewhere new just want to while i think about it do a massive shout out to those of you on my patreon guys you're awesome i really appreciate that little bit of extra support it really helps it goes a long way and uh yeah i really appreciate you if anybody else there wants to jump on help support this channel help me make this content links in the description below head over there's a couple of options a little bit of extra content for those of you on there extra communication like i said i really appreciate you guys thank you so much you guys are awesome all right i'm gonna put this camera away put my head down walk for a bit and we'll catch up on the river Several fish, I can see three straight away. Let's set up, eh? All right, so we are at the first piece of water. This is where I'm gonna start fishing up from. So I'm gonna put the uh, gear together because I can see four fish from here. Probably won't catch any of them, but I'm definitely gonna have a go for them. So I'll set up, I'll talk you through what I'm using and then we'll uh, crack on and spook some fish. Right, so I've got two rods with me today. I got Larry, Helios 3 six way F. Larry's been with me for a while now, um, and my other rod I had, which is exactly the same model, I managed to snap the other week. But it happens. I'll get that sorted out when I get home. And in the meantime, Larry's going to step in. My spare rod is blackout five weight. I'm pretty sure that's got enough grunt that I can overload that with a six weight line, which is on here, and it'll handle it just fine. I'm chucking the Mirage LT size two and this dark olive. And on here is a scientific angler's amplitude infinity smooth six weight line. I've got a seven foot floating poly leader down to a tippet ring. And then at the moment, I've got nothing off that. I'm going to build a new leader. Just because of where we are and the size of the fish in here. And the fact you've got to make every single shot count. We'll build a new one. What do I then, pal? Okay, so floating poly leader, seven foot. So we're going to go long leaders in here, man. Long leaders. So it's double Davy. 3x this is a scientific angler's absolute supreme tippet it's good stuff guys it really is it's pricey but it is really good stuff take ends in the hip pack now we're going to go we're going to go about eight feet of 3x so that's five six seven eight ish and i'm going to add about three feet of four x to that and if i have to go down to five i will but i'll just see how the fish react first okay so i'm going to blood knot my four x to my three x you don't know how to tie a blood knot and you want to learn i will link it up here and you can go check that out along with the other knots the double davy perfection loop just the knots i use on a daily basis but really just whatever knot you're comfortable with have confidence in Oh, you see three fish lined up on the drop-off over there. And they all look like good fish. Tag end in the hip pack. Now off of this dropper here, where I've tied the four X to the three, I'm gonna leave that one tag end long because that's where I'm gonna add split shot. When I uh, nymph for that an indicator today. And then I'll put small nymph on here. I'm gonna try a little gray nymph to start with. Little bit of weight and just uh, no split shot and just see if that's enough to get down to them and get their attention. If not, I'll add a bit of weight. Crush the barb, and we're good to go. Perfect. Now I'm just caught up in the bushes. Brilliant. All right, 
see what we can do. Got him. Yes. So strong, so pretty, so healthy. Just keep that up, 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 up. Come on, bro. God, you're strong. Oh, yeah. Cool, man. Cool. We are off to a great start. I mean, that's a small fish for in here, but I will take anything out of this river. And uh, yeah, super, super happy about that. That's a great way to start. Confidence builder and just whew, monkeys off the back. So actually I, I ended up going with like a piece of split shot. I went small and then I actually ended up just going big. It's like a size 12, unweighted, soft tackle, NZ fishing flies, and it seemed to work. So time to move on. Great start though, so we're going to put the pack back on, we're going to start pushing up into this gorge and then uh, yeah, we'll pick our way up and get into it. Got him. Yes. Nice fish too. <laughs> he wants to go down there. I don't want to go down there. Substantial fish. Try and swing him into this little bay here. I've oh, just got maximum pressure on this fish at the moment. Yeah, that's ball like it. Yeah, what a beautiful fish. Oh. Yeah, that's just amazing. This is a bit more like what we're in here for.
much more like what we're in here for. That's, that was a spectacular thing, really cool. Took a few fly changes uh, before I found the one that he wanted, but he ended up taking this little, I don't know if you can see that, how well you can see that. It's a little kind of hairs here, soft dackle with a bit of gold rib. Uh, and then there was a bit of split shot on there, which came off in the fight. That worked out well. Just saw him move slightly to the left and then just kind of drew and then felt the weight and he was on. Whew, strong fish too. I was in a, I was in a bit of trouble there as he was kind of heading downstream toward those rapids. But all good, worked out well. Stoked two fish from this river. Woohoo! That's uh, pretty, pretty good. All right, first little up and over, and then another piece of water. And then I'm pretty sure it's where I need to get out of the river. Gotta be super careful. Just what you doing here? Especially with the big pack. Everything slow, calculated, thought out. Because this is no place to hurt yourself. It's all pretty uh, sketchy. <laughs> Wicked pool though. Look at that cool tree. Ah, man, these places are so cool. Okay, so the back fish ended up dropping right down opposite and then below me and then he just saw me, caught me with my pants down. And then I saw another fish deeper up in that um, faster stuff and I tried to fish to him for a while but I just couldn't get the drift and I'm just soaking up a bit much time on here. I really need to get up in here and get on the other side of the gorge and then I'm good. So uh, yeah, it's lunchtime. Yeah, it's 12 o'clock so I'm going to uh, have a quick snack, do this bush bash and get back into the river and then... Whew, then we can slow down, find a campsite, fish a bit more, hopefully find a fish, and just see what's up there. Uh, this is as far as I've ever been on this river, so everything from here on is new stuff. saying this is better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Probably just done that. That's a long way down. That is a long way down. Yeah. Gotta make sure I don't get myself stuck. 
or hurt. Perfect. <coughs> Whew. So they got a bit, uh, well, got a bit of shit there for a while. Massive creek. Some real sketchy kind of sidling around. Some very steep edges. But hopefully I'm past the worst of it now. It's just slow going. I kind of thought it might be a bit quicker than this, stupidly. Uh, but I based that on nothing, you know, just looking at the top I met. Very different when you've got boots on the ground, no way. But it's all good, it's all good in the hood. Just after one, I'll pop out of here, sit down, have some lunch, have a rest, then go fishing. I just gotta find my way into it, that's all. There's gotta be a way down in this side somewhere. Oh. Oh boy, <laughs> look at that. Man, that, I mean, I've done worse, but that was a big, big old mission. There's a couple of places there where it got super sketchy, sidling along like next to the big drop off, looking down into that gorge. Uh, some big creeks to negotiate. It's pretty warm in there. Yeah, so just had to go slow and just be careful. And, but it's all good, we're here. I'm pretty sure this is it. I think there's a campsite, maybe a K up from here. It looked like it was all right on, uh, on the map, so. We'll go up there, find a campsite, dump the stuff, see what happens. But we're here. This is what I wanted to see. It's all good from here. Okay, I can see one fish, two fish, three fish, four fish. You see four fish. Surely I can get a shot at one of these. Surely, and I might camp here. This is pretty good. Look at this. A bit of clear little area there, big enough for myself. I like that, I like that. I do, I do, I do, I like it. I like four fish in this pool. I see one of them eat off the top. And they all look very chewy. Very, very chewy. Quarter past two. I'm not that fussed about going too much further. I'll do most of my fishing tomorrow. But it would be nice to try and nobble one, eh? Just one. So I'm going to put it dry over these guys, especially when the one at the front is eating off the top. Uh, the other ones that are behind him, they seem to be pretty high in the water. So, you know, let's give it a nudge, eh? Just going to put like a size 14 tricky situation. And then we'll see if they look at it. And refuse it, I'll drop the sides. If they don't even look at it, then I'll just put a nymph underneath it. Tag ends in the hip pack. Barb's already crushed, beauty. A little bit of lube. Good to go. That's not bad. Oh, there's a goat. Hello, goat. Well, that's pretty cool. Hello. Bah. 
Look at this, guys. Look at this. Big old billy goat and a nanny. Bah! Oh, yeah, that just topped the day off. Boom, done. Took fly change or two, had a couple of refusals and just changed to a size 16 parachute Adams. Slow motion, dry fly, so good. That's just topped my day off. Three fish out of this river in a day, that's, that's as good as I've ever done. So what I might do is see if I can turn this into my campsite. Just try and clear some of these rocks. Let that pool rest, maybe have a look in the top and then just leave the rest of that for tomorrow. What a cool day, what a cool place. Okay, now for those of you interested in like gear stuff, I thought I'd show you what I'm running for this trip. So I've got this tent from MSR, which I've had for a few years now, and it's really good. It's light, small, does the job, seems pretty waterproof, hasn't let me down yet. I'm probably going to get a different one very soon, just because I want to try something else. Now, uh, I've been running this new sleeping mat from Bushbuck, which is really cool. This guy here. Just something different, just something new, and I've used it a few times on this trip now, and uh, they're really good, really, really thick, nice and warm. Uh, you don't feel the ground below you at all. I'm liking it a lot so far. Rather than just blowing it up like usual, what you have, this is the set that it goes in, you have this inflatable bag thing. And what you do is, the bottom side here, you have these two valves, and all you do is just pop one of those open, and then in that bag then you've got this, and then all you do is just bang that bad boy in there like that. And then the other end of the bag, this is what you put the actual mat in to store it. You basically fill that up, and then as you pump that down like this, this fills with the air, and then you just push it into the mat. Way less pressure on your lungs, you know, what you don't go lightheaded nearly as much as you do with the other mats. And then all you do after you've uh, pretty much done it is you just top it off. Boom. Oh, and she is good to go. The other cool thing about this is, uh, I don't know if you can see, but they've actually, this top bit here, they've incorporated like a little pillow section. So even if you don't have a pillow, you've got some kind of pillow. <laughs> and as you can see, like it's pretty, it's pretty thick. I'm really liking it. And then just two more things. Got my trusty sleeping bag in here. 
And I've been trying out this one from Bushbuck as well. Uh, there's two of them. There's a there's like a lighter summer one, and then this is the the winter one. I can't remember the name of them. I should know, but I can't remember. It's this guy here. This, this is like the, the heavier of the two sleeping bags they do, and it's really nice. It's real cozy. It's real warm. It's eight, 850 loft, whatever that means. It's goose down. It's really warm. And lastly, this is a bit of a luxury, I know, but take my word for it, this little sleeping pillow here is the bomb. And the secret is not to fully inflate that bad boy. That, my friends, is luxury. So that's pretty much it. That's what I've been running on this trip. So in my tent, and as you come inside here, look like this. The sleeping mat down the bottom there. There's that comfy pillow. Sleeping bag. It's gonna be a good night's sleep, people. Sleep like a baby, a wee baby. 20 to four, I might go for a walk and just do one more pull, just see. We'll see if there's something further up there. Then we'll uh, call it for the day. So I was sneaking in position for this fish, and then I realized there's actually another fish really close to me now. Good fish, good fish. Just, Well, we could do this. We could do this quickly. No messing, no messing. Oh, off that rock. Ooh, come on, come on, come on. Get out of that current. Come on. Oh. Shit. Cool fish. Oh yeah! That's just a beautiful fish. Dude, what a way to end the day. I mean, I didn't get far. I'm only still in the camp pool, but at the head of it. And I spent a long time on that fish. Just, I think he looked at a couple of drifts and it was just, he was moving over and it was just, it was a tough piece of water to get a fish to look at a fly. Anyway, I persevered and eventually, um, where's my rod? Oh, it's down there. Um, and then eventually he took a tiny uh, soft tackle, that same NZ fishing fly soft tackle that I caught the first fish on this morning. So that's fitting, eh? Started and finished the day catching a fish on that same same soft tackle. Anyway, it's 20 to 5. Uh, I could go on, but nah, I'm good. Four fish today. Four fish. That's that's awesome. That's a really good day in here. Um, and then finishing with that guy there. That's a whoa, what a cool fish. So much character. So I think I'm gonna go back to camp, change into my camp clothes, drink a coffee. What a cool place to spend the night. I'm looking forward to this evening. It's gonna be good. And then tomorrow I'm just up and into it. If you've been watching these videos for a while, you've seen me use this before. It's brilliant. It's from a company called Hydropack, and it's just basically a, a collapsible um, bladder. Just go down to the river, fill that up, holds four liters, and then you've got yourself camp water. You ain't got to keep going back and forth and back and forth. It's really, really good. So 
sorry about this, but um, the sand flies are ridiculous. There's been barely any sand flies all day. Um, and now, we're trying to make up for lost time, I think. They are really going for it. So I've been real uh, lightweight and uh, space saving on this trip, so I didn't bring the AeroPress. I bought these Jed's coffee bags. They're actually pretty good. And then I got my Leave it as you found it bag. I think that's what it's called. Leave it, leave it better than you find it bag, or anyway, it's a collapsible mesh rubbish bag from Scientific the gang. It scrunches up into nothing in your pack. Chuck your rubbish in it. Clip it on the outside of your pack when you go out, and uh, it's brilliant. Gonna get that going. Coffee in there. Bit of a milk. Ooh, I know what I'm gonna get. Ooh. I'm gonna make it Irish. That's not my pee. It's whiskey. So I'm going to have an Irish coffee, a celebration of a brilliant day. Ooh. The key at camp is to kind of just keep everything in one place, or just little piles of stuff so you don't kind of lose stuff. Too easy to get spread out and then leave stuff behind. Just can't help yourself, can you? Just got to get in there and drown. No, just a little bit. Cheers to a good day, guys. It's good. You've seen these pocket boys. Brilliant, man. Absolutely brilliant. Stuff. How good is that? Okay. It's gonna take like a couple minutes, mainly because you know, I can't keep my face uncovered for too long because of the damn sand flies. They're just destroying me. It's unreal. But yeah, I just want to talk real quick about locator beacons, PLBs, whatever you want to call them. Really, like when you come in a place like this, so much can go wrong out here. And especially if you're on your own, actually, now scrap that. It doesn't even matter if you're on your own. Even if you're with someone, one of you should at least have a PLB. Now. There's loads of different ones out there and, and they're all pretty good from what I can gather. I talk to a lot of people that do this kind of stuff and these kind of trips and they never take a beacon with them. I've heard it all like, um, I've been doing this for years, I know what I'm doing, I'm not stupid, I'll be alright. All, all those kind of things and it's, it's just a dumb thing to do, is to come somewhere like this and not have a beacon with you. Because if something happens, and it doesn't have to be spectacular, you ain't got to fall off a cliff. All you could do is just roll your ankle, you know, and you can just dislocate your knee, you can snap your leg, you can just tumble over, you can lose it on a river crossing, just any number of things can happen out here. If you don't have a beacon, you're screwed. No one's coming to get you. <laughs> so as well as telling somebody where I go and leaving an itinerary for them, I always have a beacon on me, always. In fact, I have two. And I'm just gonna show you which ones I have and talk about why I've got them both or why you would have one over the other. It'll be quick, I promise, to so stick with me. On my hip pack here, I always have my beacon on me, all right? Now, this particular one is a Rescue Me beacon. This is my second one of these now, and they're awesome. They're very small, they don't get in the way, they're fully waterproof, the battery lasts for seven years, and I think they're pretty much indestructible, I think, and they're super reliable. So, the thing about these is, they have one job, that is, if you get in trouble, you push the button and it triangulates your position, sends it back to search and rescue, and then they can actually come and get you based on the signal this is given off. Now, these are really reliable and accurate, even if you're in like heavy cover or you're in the gorgy kind of country. Just the way this works with the satellites and the number of satellites that it uses, it means that it's very, very accurate. And that is basically why I have that one on me all the time. You'll notice it's on my hip pack, it's on me. So if I lose my pack, I've still got this. It's no good at the bottom of your pack if you lose your pack down a river. I mean, they're like 400 bucks or something like that. I mean, it's stupid cheap. You spend more on a rod, a reel, uh, a GoPro, I don't know. So many other things that cost more than that that won't save your life. That's what I use. Um, there's, there's definitely other good ones, just as good ones out there. It's just a matter of having a look and seeing which ones you want to go for. Now, the other one I've got is I've got this InReach, the Garmin InReach Mini. Now, I only got this last season. I got this more for just communication. From what I understand, uh, when you're in heavy cover or really gorgy stuff, 
these are a little bit less reliable. When you push that SOS button, it's not quite as accurate as that Rescue Me one that I just showed you. It's pretty good in open country when you have a clear sky, but you're not always in that kind of scenario, so that's why I've got that other one. That's so if, if all else fails and I need a helicopter, that's what I'm pressing. This one, this is more for just communication so I can touch base with the outside world. I can touch base at home, I can tell someone I'm okay, I can tell someone I'm gonna be late out, I can tell someone that I've changed my plans. I've used this a couple of times now to communicate with my chopper pilot to pick me up somewhere else because my plans have changed and I've gone somewhere else. So this is really, really handy for that sort of thing. But if you're not so fussed about that and you just want it for like, I need help, push the button, come get me, I would probably go for something like the other one, which is just that, that's all it does. All it does is send a signal for someone can come and get you. This one, dual purpose, it's good, but I'll probably go for the other one as far as reliability and accuracy goes. This, however, for communication with the outside world, it's proved so, so helpful, so handy, and I'm really glad I've got it. Basically, you download an app on your phone called EarthMate, and the two link up and sync, and then all you do is you just type it away, send it, and you can send and receive text just like a text message it's brilliant that's why i carry two but hey man it's up to you depends what kind of stuff you're doing where you're going how often you're out there and really what you want from it whatever you choose just choose something and take it with you because ah, it's, just, it's just not a good place to get hurt you're very 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 isolated out here and you're a long way from anyone and uh, it's just good to know that if you really really need to someone can come and get you Okay, time for dinner. This is going to be uh, mainly sand flies, I think. We've got ourselves some mashed potato and we've got ourselves some sweet butter chicken. This stuff is the bomb. If you haven't heard of Go Native, just go buy some. I guarantee you'll love it. So I'm going to get this water boiling. I'm going to pop this in a water, heat that up, use the water from that to make my mashed potato, smack it all together, drop the cooking. Butter chicken. This guy here. That's what that looks like dry. It's a good mashed potato. It's real good. Now this will be a couple of minutes. I always give it a little bit longer. And then it's pretty much good to go. I mean, it couldn't really be any easier than that. All right. Take that out like that. And there we go, butter chicken and mash. Courtesy of Go Native. All right, I'm gonna go eat this on the move. Damn sand flies, they're just crushing me.